If your church is like most, you spend a lot of time getting ready for Christmas. You decorate your facilities and you write a great message for your Christmas Eve service. But most churches skip out when it comes to getting their website ready for Christmas. In this episode, we'll talk about how your church can make your church website Christmas ready. We hope this conversation helps you reach more people and grow. This is the Reach Right Podcast. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast, episode number 75. I am your host, Thomas Costello, and with me, as always, is my co-host... Ian Hyatt. What's up, Thomas? Hey, not too much, Ian. Excited to chat today in the Christmas season here. We're in December now, and uh, it doesn't feel very Christmassy here in Hawaii. It never really does, but... (laughs) Neither here uh, in Austin, Texas, too. We're still kind of like 80 degrees, I think, today. (laughs) Yeah, but that's okay. We can still... uh, uh, Jesus is the reason for the season, so we're excited uh, to get going with that. We're going to be talking about six things that you need to do to get your church website ready for Christmas. Um, I think this is something that will be a good conversation. I think that, you know, I've pastored in churches, multiple churches in different parts of the country, and there is lots of things to be done around the Christmas season from preparing your Christmas Eve service to doing a staff Christmas picture or card to all the stuff that we do around, you know, decorating the whole facility, all the stuff we do. I have found that a lot of churches don't make any real changes to their online presence during the Christmas season at all. Uh, And, uh, you know, we've been in the web industry long enough to know that, I I don't know if you remember back when we we first started doing this, that it was a popular thing to do to like, do like a Christmas, like theme on your website. Like you just kind of like, we... we (laughs) Did we used to have one thing where snow would fall or something like that on a site? Snow and then wrapping paper around the borders, and we wrapping had like paper. A, yeah, we had like a graphic skin selector that we offered, and uh, yeah, we used to laugh about that. It's funny because it's it's just you know we we started doing this in the mid two thousands two thousand and six seven you know yeah. that time frame and. Man, websites have changed so much in that time there. But this has been something that we've uh, we've encouraged churches to do for a while. I don't know that putting a wrapping paper border around your yeah. website is going to get you. Uh, no people will be added to the kingdom of God because of that, probably. Uh, right. But, but I think that there are some things that you can and probably should be doing. And I, I think it, it's it's something where we are really starting to take our digital expression of ministry it, we've realized that it is just as important as physical ministry. It's actual right. ministry that's happening. And now you and I are both believers in in-person gatherings. We, right. we absolutely believe in that. But we are also big believers in the value of doing things right digitally. And we put so much effort into getting ready for Christmas in the physical. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit today about what we can do to get things ready in the digital world uh, to you know, kind of get ready for the holiday season here. Yeah, which helps you actually uh, convert people to the physical service. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep, no, that's For exactly sure. right. So, I'll, good. so I'll we have six of them, here. right? I don't know. Yeah. Do you want to... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you want to kick us off? I will. I will. Excited to do so. First one is build a landing page. And actually, I'm glad we're kind of starting with this point because, you know, I think everyone thinks of like promoting it on the home page of your website um, which you should, uh, you, yeah. you most certainly should, uh, prom- I mean, you know, there's usually some sort of an events thing. You don't want to, and in joking about what we were just talking about with like putting uh, wrapping paper around the border and all of that, you don't want to like change your brand and your strategy right. totally on your home page. But, you know, obviously a landing page is a good thing though, because this would be a page you even have its own URL, like your church's website slash Christmas Eve, um, you know, yep. and and it will have specific content that is going to not only inform people of when the service is, but that's going to be invitational. And there's just a lot you can do with landing pages and, and, you know, traffic goes to landing pages. That's the way yeah. things happen with Google now. And, uh, so it's not just about a home page and a few other basic pages. Landing pages are a key thing. So you want to build one for your Christmas Eve service for sure. Yeah, and this might be a, a new term to some of our audience here. I know we talk about it from time to time on our podcast, but um, it is important, I think, to be thinking about your web presence in terms of landing pages, which is yeah. a landing page is just basically a starting off page for people when they get onto your website. So yeah. what is that place that they go to or a place that they can 
find on the website. And so it really has become a strategy. I think that before people would try to drive all traffic to their homepage. So you would um, link on, if you, if there was social media at the time, you'd link to your, your homepage, you would uh, send your homepage in an email. And now we've kind of become more sophisticated where we realize that search engines, uh, social media posts, those are all probably, it's better if we try to push that traffic to a specific page that deals with the information that people are looking for, right? Instead of, if I want to introduce my Christmas Eve service to somebody, I'm better off sending them directly to mychurch.com slash Christmas than I am sending them to the homepage, having a big banner that says, hey, join us this Christmas, click here to learn more information, and then having them go there. So just from a... Uh, from an outreach perspective, you'll get more traffic and you'll introduce what's happening uh, during the Christmas season at your church. You'll do yeah. a better job uh, giving that information if you build it into a landing page there. So yeah, yeah, I think you're exactly right as far as content though. I think that's right to get the right domain name for it. Yeah, um, You definitely want to highlight your Christmas Eve service, some of those kinds yeah. of things. But there's some other stuff that you can make sure to to include in there. We'll talk yep. some more about those in the rest of this conversation here, but let me go ahead and hit the next one. Yeah, uh, It is in order to get your website ready for Christmas, make sure you're using the right keywords, especially yep. on this landing page, right? Yeah. So he, here's one of the mistakes I see people make is maybe they have a, they figured out that their Christmas Eve service, they're going to preach a message uh, called Mary, did you know? Let's say that that's yeah. what they decide their, their, uh, their Christmas Eve uh, message will be about. And uh, there's some debate on whether she knew or not. I, I yeah. <laughs> contend that some people do contend that she did know because the angel came and told her. But yeah. I think if you really listen to the words of the song, I don't think she knew the extent of what Jesus would do. So that's sure. I'm in the camp of Mary did not know. That's what, how about whole, you? Another, uh, I'm with you, but that'd be a whole nother, we can do a whole nother podcast on that. <laughs> oh, so. That'll be our next episode of yeah. did Mary know? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that may be your theme, right? Or maybe that's your uh, your your sermon title uh, for your Christmas Eve service. There are not a lot of people out there searching for the term, Mary, did you know? And if they are searching for that, they're almost certainly not looking to find your Christmas uh, landing yeah. page at your church. They're looking for lyrics to the song. For that song, They're right. looking to yeah. see who wrote it and who sang right. it and when it was written on Wikipedia and all those kinds of things. And so yeah. it's important that you really think through some of those keywords. So some of the ones to make sure you hit are uh, Christmas Eve service, Christmas service, uh, church Christmas schedule, some of those kinds yeah. of things. Those are things that people are going to be searching for in this Christmas yeah. season. And you want to make sure that those keywords are in your site there. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's going to make your event found. And uh, and that's something that I think a lot of churches miss. They just think of the basic contact information or, yeah. uh, or service time information and and just titling it and, and inviting someone. But that's a that's huge. So I'm glad yep. you covered that. Yeah. Yep, I'll get the next one. Next one is put the service online. Uh, yeah. I would think that this should be a, a no brainer by now, but it's still something that we see often missed on mm-hmm. church websites. But um, even before the pandemic, that was important to do. Even if someone came and watched it, grandma maybe didn't get to come and you thought grandma would really be blessed by the message. So you'd yep. want to be able to uh, have her go online or share it online with uh, with her, but but I think now you know looking at where we're at because of the pandemic, there's still people that are not comfortable coming, and there's still right. people that, and and even if they were comfortable coming, they're just more comfortable watching it online from home, maybe on Christmas Eve. So yeah. I think that uh, that should be something that that you every church wants to make sure they do a good job of on their site. Yeah, I think, you know, we said this already, but you and I are definitely in the camp that if I had a choice between someone watching online and someone being yeah. there in the middle of the congregation uh, during Christmas Eve, I would definitely take the latter. I would want yeah. people to be there with us. Uh, but the reality is that there's it, that's not really the option that we're giving right. people, right? It's not saying... They're they're basically deciding, are they going to come or not if you don't put your services online? And so there's a few different camps of people that I think we have to be aware of. So yeah, there's the the COVID people uh, that are yeah. not ready to come back to a service there. And you can say what you will about them. I know some of our audience, they probably think those are really smart people. Some people yeah. in our audience think those people are fools. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's not our position to, yeah. I, I recommend you don't get into that those waters at your church there. That's not what we're about either. But yeah. I think the reality is there are people that want to 
connect with a church or connect with a service or hear the gospel of Jesus and they they are willing to watch online, but they're yeah. not willing to walk into your doors and sit down at a service there right now. So yeah. they're an important target to reach in that. I think that there's so many people that are traveling. Um, I don't know if you guys are headed down to see family around Christmas or anything, or maybe yeah. families coming to you. I know in Hawaii yeah. we don't do as much traveling, but we have yeah. we have my wife's folks. They come and spend the a week with us here, so they're not yeah. around at their church for Christmas. Uh, and so there's people that are always traveling. It's a great chance to keep them connected with the life of the church and those things there. So yeah, Absolutely. I think those are the two primary categories of people yeah. that. And then I guess there's also that other people that you know they they have this connection to your church, but they have so yeah. many family traditions that happen. This is a chance for you to you know give yeah. them an opportunity to connect with your church yeah. even while those traditions are happening if they're right. doing something with parents or something to that effect. So yeah, I think yeah. making sure you get it online is really important. Yeah, I think we covered a lot of bases with that one. So yep. just a lot of good reasons. Cool. I'm up next. Uh, it's create Christmas themed content. Yeah. Create Christmas themed content. So here's what this is about. This is uh, this is something that I think is a really big opportunity, probably one of the biggest that very few churches take advantage of is. Now, I said that you want to be careful with your main content. If, you're, if your sermon's called Mary Did You Know, you right. don't want to just use that as your primary keyword on right. your landing page. But I am a huge proponent of creating content, specifically blog posts. If you can pull off videos, those kind of things, that's great too. But specifically blog posts, it's one of the easiest around Christmas themed ideas. So what if your church, uh, you made it a point that um, you created the list in your city of the best Christmas lights to go and see, you know, the, yeah, the best cool. neighborhoods or the best streets to go check out for Christmas yeah. lights. Because yeah. how, I mean, I don't know, that's something that I've searched before. Like where are the best Christmas lights in Honolulu? Yeah. I don't know if you know where they are in your area in Austin. Like what street do people go to? Or yeah, there every there town has that yeah. street Everyone, where they have yeah. all the Christmas lights and those kinds yeah. of things. So I think this would be a great idea for a post and that way people are getting onto your church website and yeah. they're connecting with content that they're actually looking for. They're making a connection with you. Even if it's yeah. just in passing, they see your name, they see your brand, and you yeah. become a church that they're aware of. And when it comes time for them to come and visit a church, that you'll be one of the first ones that they right. think of. This is the way that we need to be thinking. Like, for instance, here at Retrite, we write a lot of blog posts and yeah. content that isn't necessarily about... Uh, how to build great websites or uh, how to do local search engine optimization on Google and you know the things that we we offer to churches we write yeah. content other than that so our yeah. best performing post on our blog it's called 18 scriptures to share before your next offering time at church now, yeah. we're not in the business of helping churches do offerings or anything yeah. like that but we wrote that content it gets tons of traffic yeah uh, and it's a way for us to connect with people that are actually they could possibly use our services in the future the yeah. same thing goes for you i think maybe christmas recipes if you have a great uh, recipe yeah. for apple cider or something like that yeah. that you could use those are all really good ideas but think about that what are things that you search for related to christmas what's the best christmas tree lot <laughs> what's the best, best christmas yeah. tree and and cuz there's been a shortage uh, of them around here too so if you know of of one that ha doesn't have a shortage and has good deals. That's something good. Are idea you guys real too. Christmas tree people or are you fake? We finally became fake. We've been real for, and then we finally just got tired of being real and became fake to, and found a good deal on a big, tall, fake one. <laughs> yeah. Here in Hawaii, they're like, I mean, they are a fortune because they all have to be shipped oh, in and they have to get here kind of quickly. We, we did some real ones on the mainland when we were, uh, we, we had a Christmas tree farm. We did that whole cut it yeah. down kind of a thing yeah. back then. But yeah, for us, it's you, you go fake here. That's what you do. Yep. Yeah, when no, in Rome. That's good. But I think just in, in closing on that point, I think it also, it just shows that it you're making it about them, uh, about, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not just come to our service. Of course, we want them to come to our Christmas Eve service, but it, it's just showing that you care about things that, that people are interested in. And, and I think that that's, that's a good thing to do. You know, it's, uh, I think we always, we're always about, you know, delivering the gospel to people and, and, and our mission and vision for people, but forget that we just got to be people sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let me, yeah, let me add one more thing. I, I think that that is, you're exactly right. And I think sometimes churches have a hard time getting over the hump of making sure that they feel like this obligation to make everything on their church website spiritual. 
right? Yeah, and and we yeah. know that, I mean, you know, you can make some kind of a case as to why the best Christmas tree farms in my area can be spiritual because yeah. God loves Christmas tree farmers. And I get all that, but yeah. I'm saying that it, it's not, you don't have to preach a sermon in every blog post, right? It right, can actually right. just be family oriented content. It could be about recipes and Christmas trees yeah. and Christmas lights and all those things that are wholesome. Uh, but you know, it's still, it's healthy to do that. And again, it's yeah. a great way for you to connect with your community with no strings attached. I think that's exactly it. Yeah. Good. Well, I'll handle the next one, which is we always mention this, right? <laughs> and it's to choose a primary call to action. We're always yep. big on calls to action and, and, and everything that we do. And, and, and it is a good thing to do uh, on your church website. Have a good call to action. You know, if you're meeting in person, obviously, which most churches are now, I think that call to action is to plan a visit, uh, you know, to, to let people know that uh, you're coming uh, on, mm -hmm. on the, to the Christmas Eve service. Maybe it is to watch live if that's what yeah. you prefer and if that's where you're trying to drive traffic or if you're not meeting in person yet. Um, so, But have one primary one. Don't give too yeah. many. I think that's the key thing is they're already there. People are already impatient uh, on your site. And so make it simple. What is that next step for them uh, for Christmas? I think you're exactly right. I think um, you know we are always big proponents of getting – a call to action, but also having them give information to respond yeah. to it. So if you can do that at your church in good conscience and it makes sense, you know, it's hard to just, people won't give you their information if you don't ask for it. So it's, yeah. and you have to have a reason that they're giving it to you. So you can't just say, hey, fill out your name here and we'll, you know, just fill out your name and let's let's see what happens. It has to be yeah. a reason. So usually with Christmas Eve, it's kind of, especially in this COVID season, it's a great time yeah. to say, hey, we'll reserve space for you, for you yeah. and your family at, I, I don't know, a lot of churches do multiple services and sure. they have they can run out of space at whatever that most popular time is. And then yeah. the late one or the early one doesn't get as much traffic at it. So you can reserve space. That makes people give their information. But again, this is so valuable for you to pull forward some of that follow-up process and say, hey, if you're a smaller church and you can pull this off, hey, I'm so looking forward to seeing you at the Christmas yeah. Eve service. Uh, I, I'd love to meet you and shake your hand. I'll be the guy with the you know, the reindeer sweatshirt on or something like that, whatever. Yeah. You, can, you can start to have those conversations ahead of time and again, make your visitors much stickier that way. So That's good. yeah, call to action, call to action, call to action. Every single page on your website needs to have one. This one's yep. no different, but it's really important, I think, at Christmas time here. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. I'll wrap it up here with this one. And this is obvious, but you need to start making changes now. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> uh, this is your, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, or watching this, uh, and it is the second week of December, so you're watching it right around the time that it uh, it came out. Uh, it's probably time today to start making some of these changes here. Uh, yeah. You know, think about these things. Ideally, you want to roll them out right after Thanksgiving. Uh, right. Again, that's the rule at my house for when we are allowed to put Christmas decorations up. I don't know oh, when you boy. guys do it. Oh, we, yeah. No, we we do. We're the same way. But my gosh, people even in. Uh, uh, October around here, we're getting ready for Christmas. So that's, that's yeah. a sin, man. You can't I do know. that. October I, is we, wrong. That, yes, it, decorating well before <laughs> Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think Thanksgiving is the right time to roll these things out if possible. You're not too late if you're listening yeah. to this right when it comes out here the second week of December, but it is time to start making some of those changes. Get your landing page built, start to create some content around it. Uh, I think that you have, uh, the longer these things are up, the more time search engines have to start yeah. uh, archiving it and making sure it understands what the content is, start delivering it. So you want this early. Yeah. I will say this too. One of the great things about it is that the content you create for this this year, let's say you make a list yeah. of the best Christmas tree farms in Georgetown, something yep. like that, or near Georgetown. Well, the Christmas tree farms will probably be about the same best farms next year as right. they are this year. So your yeah. content is still going to have value. You can re-promote it and put that out there. And and I think each year you'll start to get more and more traffic yeah. on these kinds of posts. But the idea is to start early and make sure you're ready to go. That's absolutely right. And I think too, it, it made me think of, we've worked with a lot of like church plants uh, and startups that you know, they'll call us two weeks before uh, launching and they're like, hey, we need a website right away. And I'm like, you needed to do this like, you know, a year ago, six months ago. Now, again, this is a little different for the Christmas Eve event. Like we said, after Thanksgiving is a good time. But 
it's just don't procrastinate. It'll help you reach more visitors the sooner you do it too. So, yep. Yeah. So today's the day. Hop on it, guys. It's a yeah. good chance to do that. So, well, we want to thank you guys so much for being part of our Reach Right family. Uh, if this uh, if this podcast, this episode, or any of them are helpful to you, uh, it means a lot to us if you rate and review, subscribe, hit that like button. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for being part of our Reach Right family. Uh, Merry Christmas, and we yeah. hope to catch you next week. All righty.